Hey folks, I'm diving across the pond today to take a look at one of the world's most prestigious colleges, Harvard University. So let's take a look. Well, hi, my name is Ray. I'll be your tour guide today. I'm a senior in Dunster House and I study astrophysics. So why don't we go ahead and then look at Harvard University? Oh wow, so just looking at this time lapse, it looks massive. So this building right here is the Harry Elkins Widener Memorial Library. Oh, it was like donated it. to Harvard after Harry unfortunately passed away when the wow, Titanic sank. It's, it's His massive. mother gave this building to us, lessons. but she did so with three stipulations. I've been to Cambridge University quite a lot, and they have a collegiate system, so lots of mini universities basically. Each college within the university offers its own set of courses, it has its own lecturers, but it, it's a lot smaller on a whole, even if there are, you know, 30 or so of them. So right now we are walking in the Harvard Yard and it's very beautiful. Everything is all brick, red bricks everywhere. And the thing about Harvard is that it's the oldest higher education institution in the United States. One thing I've noticed, there's a lot of green space all throughout the campus, which is lovely to see. And lovely buildings, like all the red brick, as he said, it looks fantastic. There's no classes in this area, so it's like where a lot of the tourists come. And wow. uh, we'll go over there Tourist. to the main That's library. At least a, a massive annoyance to students. I'm often at Cambridge University and the tourists do get, get on your nerves, constantly taking pictures and everything. We're gonna crawl to every corner of Harvard University so you can the get library inspired is stunning. to one day It's very similar study. to the sort of Cambridge type libraries with all of this old style. Our uh, lecture theatre, that, that's pretty big. I've, se I've seen some decent sized lecture theatres in, in, in my time. 400 people, 500 people, but that is massive. All of those rows looking onto a massive screen. Yeah, brilliant. This is one of the best study spots on Harvard campus because Lots of it's study newly spaces. renovated. It looks extremely very productive. Aesthetic. It looks very intense. Instagram worthy. It does look very, very cozy, very comfy. It looks very much what you would think it looks like in the movies. Whereas in the universities I'm familiar with in the UK, they're much more dark, they look very intense. This is really chill, it's vibrant, it's bright, it's very American. So Harvard Business School, I'm interested, is that part of Harvard University? I assume so, but I, I don't know for sure. I know Harvard has a massive reputation of loads of businesses coming out of it. Let's see the application process. So I'd say it's a, a three-step process, and I'd break it down into one, taking the test, two, preparing your application, and then three, the interview, so. That's a very similar process to all medical students in the UK or people entering Oxford and Cambridge. So it's a 21 month program. The first nine months, it's on your classic American academic calendar, so fall, spring. Your first year fall, you take five required courses, which are accounting, finance, leadership, marketing, and then operations management. The second semester, the spring of your first year, you take business government, international economy, which is a global macroeconomics course. You take a strategy course, you take an ethics course, you take finance too, and then you also take entrepreneurial management. So that is quite interesting. In the UK, it's quite similar. Um, you have your re required classes or modules you have to take, as well as some optional ones which you can choose in the future. Jay then heads pretty much straight away into his second class of the day, negotiation. This class involves roles being given to each student in a negotiation scenario. The one today was about how a budget would be spent when building a new port. And each student then has certain things they can and cannot give during the course of the negotiations, scoring points based on the ultimate outcome of the negotiation. That seems quite interactive too, but in this setting for a business case, it, it seems quite interesting, quite like a seminar as opposed, as opposed to a lecture. So, very good. 
And now I'm off to one of my favorite places in the world, the Harvard Innovation Labs. The iLab is a place where Harvard students can come to follow their entrepreneurial pursuits, a space full of individuals with incredible passion and an unrelenting drive to change the world. This is my third semester in the Accelerator program. I'm building a platform that tracks employee sentiment in real time. I'm so much more productive in this space, sitting alongside insanely motivated students. They push me to be better. If only I could stop eating those dang free mints. So stuff like this, that, that would be really, really good for networking. I know the effect of having really motivated people around you can really help you progress much faster than you otherwise would. What's the best part of being here at the Harvard Innovation Labs? Oh man, this, the community. I think that, uh, you know, when you, when you have a paradigm where success looks like simply being a part of this community and having access to it, you've already won. And so irrespective of what happens with the venture, just the opportunity to be a part of this community is, I think, what makes success. I think that's a really good point. The community, even if whatever startup they're doing is not successful, what one would learn from other people's mistakes as well as their own will become an invaluable source of information. Do you guys do 8 a.m. classes or not? No, there's no 8 a.m. Oh, really? No, there's no 8 a.m. What's the earliest class? Okay, yeah. sounds good. That same here, we have, we have 9 a.m. lectures. Anything earlier is quite ludicrous. Uh, I, I've never heard of that. And I, I don't think the lecturers would want it either to wake up <laughs> an hour earlier. And yeah, travel time and things. Do Harvard students wear uniforms? No, they do not. You can wear whatever you'd like. Although I will say I have seen some people with vintage basketball jerseys at parties. So that's, that's a uniform, I guess. Yeah, so that's quite interesting. At least in the schooling system in the UK versus the US, we wear uniforms, whereas in the States, you guys don't. Uh, and at university, I, I think we, we will merge into a no uniform, just wear what you want sort of thing. So yeah, really interesting take on the differences, similarities of British universities and Harvard. So thank you all for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.